Welcome to the Conservative Leadership Race. Pierre Polyever should be disqualified from the Conservative race because of his support of the, of the uh, trucker convoy earlier this year. That's what fellow uh, leadership candidate Jean Charest told me on CTV's question period yesterday. Jean Charest is a liberal who should be disqualified from the leadership race because he worked for Huawei during the two Michaels crisis. Pierre Polyever shot back. And so goes the escalating rhetoric between the Charest camp and the Polyever camp. Now, there are 12 camps, 12 leadership campaigns madly scrambling to sign up new members before the deadline is up. They have eight more days to sign up members. The candidates then have until April 29th to come up with 300,000 bucks to make sure that they're on the ballot. But are all these allegations accurate? The so-called Freedom Convoy did lay siege to the downtown Ottawa uh, area for weeks while also stalling trade by blocking key international border crossing in Windsor and Coots, Alberta. Originally billed as a protest against the vaccine mandates for truckers, it obviously became a magnet for many other messages. Uh, the mayor of Ottawa, the police chief, the premier of Ontario, all call, and the prime minister all called the protest illegal. Mr. Polyever did say on February 10th he's proud of the truckers and he stands with them, but does that really qualify him from running? Does Mr. Charest's work for Huawei, which he's talked about on this program, really mean he shouldn't run for the leadership? Well, let's bring in two people from each camp. Jenny Byrne, CEO of Jenny Byrne & Associates, conservative strategist, former advisor to Stephen Harper, and now working as a key advisor on the Pierre Paul Ever leadership campaign team, and Tasha Carradin, principal at Navigator and the co-chair of the Jean Charest leadership campaign. Uh, great to have both of you here. Uh, let me start with you, Jenny Byrne. Uh, you saw the interview that I did with Mr. Charest on Sunday. He said Mr. Paul Ever, in his view, supported illegal blockades and that he, quote, you can't break laws to use his words because he says Pierre Paul Ever thinks he's above the law and should be disqualified. Your response. Well, I think that's ridiculous. I, I, it's hard for me to understand why Jean Charest is even running for leader of the Conservative Party, because he seems to dislike uh, every member of the Conservative Party. You, you've got a, a party uh, that it overwhelmingly supported the Freedom uh, Convoy. Uh, you have caucus members, including our interim leader, Candace Bergen. I'd like to know if Jean Charest thinks that she's not capable or uh, credible to run uh, as, and, and, and also disputes the the hundred the thousands and thousands of Canadians across the country uh, over the last three months that supported that uh, you know mr. Polyev's Pierre's uh, and uh, Pierre's speeches and our events and uh, where we're we're selling memberships have have drawn close to 20,000 people in the last two weeks and so I think it's going to be very hard for Jean Charest, someone who recently joined the, the party the same as Tasha um, uh, recently joined the <laughs> to be able to say that uh, that that this is not what the Conservative Party is uh, is looking for. Tasha Carradine. <laughs> yes, Evan. Well, where to start? Um, you know, uh, the history of Jean Charest with the Conservative Party and its predecessor, the Progressive Conservative Party, goes back as far as mine, actually a bit farther, almost 35 years, because he was there on the front lines during the uh, government of Brian Mulroney. That's where I got to know him. That's one of the reasons I'm supporting him for leader, because he has a deep understanding of what conservatism is in this country, what it can do, how to achieve great things like the free trade agreement and the other projects that were achieved, the acid rain treaty, for example, under Brian Mulroney's government. He's also run a province. And yes, he was a liberal in Quebec. I know, Jenny, you're going to come out with that one, but there was no Conservative Party at the time. Uh, I guess, you know, Christy Clark was a liberal in British Columbia. Conservatives pretty much lay claim to a lot of what she did, too, because at the time there was no Conservative Party in the province. But, 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 and but Tasha, the party represented the, the center right. So if I can just say, I, I think a lot of the, the attacks, listen, Tasha. A, a lot of the attacks that you launch on Josh Charest as to why he's running, he's running because he firmly believes that this country needs another national party to govern it. And the direction that you're espousing, and yes, that some members of the Conservative Party do espouse currently, is not a direction that is going to take us to a majority government. And it's hard to argue with that. I mean, you get crowds. Yes, you've got thousands of people. So did Maxime Bernier in the last election, and he got 5% of the vote. So quite frankly, I think if you want an opening, look at what's happened with the NDP Liberal Coalition. It's given us an excellent opening on the center to write to pull in voters who feel now they have no home even with the Liberal Party and no home in a Conservative Party, though, that would veer as far right as you would take it. So why don't we go to a place with a leader who can attract enough people to actually get us into office and make the good things happen we need to for this country? Right. Well, I Jenny, would say, I, Go ahead. 
Well, I would say I, I find this all ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not sure where uh, Tash is getting her information from in terms of uh, what Canadians are, are looking for it now. The, the modern Conservative Party, something that uh, a party that she just joined herself in the last couple months, um, uh, governed half of the last 20 years, 10 of the last 20 years. Stephen Harper was prime minister uh, for that time, a time where uh, uh, Pierre Polyev was, represented a suburban uh, seat in Ontario for 17 years of that. Well, her candidate, Jean Charest, actually campaigned against us. I, I remember working in the 2008 war room uh, when, uh, well, you can you can giggle about it, Tasha, but I remember Jean Charest actually campaigning against caucus members that we have, like uh, Jacques Gourde, who is still in caucus, campaigning against us in terms of uh, in terms of policy. So we, you can giggle all you want, and you can make light of it, but the fact of the matter is, if you want to look at the modern conservative movement, let me finish, uh, in terms of what the, what the candidates are talking about, I think Jean Charest is completely disconnected from not just what conservative voters want, but from what Canadians are looking for now as well. They don't want another, they do not want another uh, uh, Justin Trudeau. And right now, that's exactly uh, what he is offering uh, to the Conservative Party membership. Well, I well, don't know where Tasha. you're getting your information. Yeah, can, uh, sorry, Evan, I, if you want to ask a question, but I'd like to respond no, no, to that. I, I, I know, no, I'd not, love you guys I'm, to respond, but, but can you just also pick up on why Mr. Shrey said he should, this is a strong word, he should be disqualified from running. I'm just, uh, is that a serious question that they, you literally think that he should be, or is that a, a metaphorical use, like he shouldn't, people, he's not a credible candidate, or you actually think he should be disqualified? I think it's a, it's a metaphorical use in the sense of saying that if you're going to govern a country and if you're going to be a parliamentarian, that your first duty is, of course, is to uphold the laws of the land. You make those laws, you debate those laws, and you uphold those laws. And, you know, I find it very interesting because I'm, I'm trying to picture what would have happened under Stephen Harper if you'd had an occupation of downtown Ottawa for three weeks, as we saw with the convoy. Would that have gone on as long? And, you know, Jenny, you were there. Stephen Harper was an extremely strong leader. He took strong decisions, unlike Justin Trudeau, of course. I, and, you know, to equate Josh Ray with Justin Trudeau is laughable, too. Josh Ray is the reason that we're sitting here. Without him in the 1995 referendum, which the, the no side won, by the way, by less than a half a percent, uh, we wouldn't have a country to even be talking about. He took on himself to get involved in that campaign, to stand for Canada. That is why he's presenting himself this time around. And that is an achievement that you cannot take away from him. To diminish his involvement in the party currently, because he was not a member of the party, per se, because he was doing other things. Yeah, he was running a province. Uh, you know, I think that also well, is a bit ridiculous. 10, for the last 10 years, he, he was working for Huawei. He wasn't running a province. Well, yeah, your, last... your candidates never worked for anyone except the government, frankly. So he's always been on the taxpayer's dime. Well, Jean Charest worked for, for a law firm. No, no, Jean Charest worked for in the private no. sector. I think private sector experience is excellent. Let me address Huawei, because I find that very interesting, no. too. Jean Charest was on Tout le monde par last night, and in French, um, so you may not have watched. It. He was very, very clear about his stance on Huawei and his stance that he would have never worked for a company that he felt was not in the interests of Canada. And he says, yeah, things have changed. He would ban 5G. He's been very clear. He would ban five, Huawei from the 5G network. The work he did was it, to bring the two Michaels home. It was to make a deal, yeah. yes, because someone had to that represent not, Huawei or they would not come home. Ask me to ask me to know. Hold on. Let, let me get Jenny. Let me just get Jenny to respond to that. Sure. Go ahead, Jenny Abby. Burke. That is, Tasha, that's not true. He was hired by Huawei to actually do 5G. How we know that is because that is what, what Huawei has confirmed. He was not hired yeah, that's by Huawei. Ka, that's what Ali Khan Velchi of Huawei said, yes. Um, anyway, I will just say I mean, that I, Josh Charest has been very clear as to his involvement. Okay, his well, I involvement. can't hear you both, guys. I, I, t Tasha, hold on. Which was Tasha. to bring the money to the money. No, that's that. not true. Tasha, you're actually lying. What you're doing right now is lying. I'm um, lying. Josh wow. Hired that's what your you candidate says, too. You guys have been so negative during this campaign. It's really Tasha, unfortunate we've had to take the gloves off at this Tasha, point. You guys, you guys called for, okay. for Pierre to like be disqualified. You are lying right You've now. You've been attacking Huawei our candidate Huawei. from the very beginning. You expect, I guess, I guess the thing is, Jenny, when you start scorched earth, okay, then eventually you're going to get it back. Huawei, Huawei, it's Huawei, unfortunate. Tasha, it's very unfortunate Tasha, you brought the okay, candidate got, this We cannot. Tasha, are, the what viewer saying, can't hear you both. You so you, here's what I'm going to do. Hold on. Jenny, Jenny and Tash, who I know both very well, um, this is a, an important debate, and I want the audience to hear. So well, let me just take, do this. Let me take a short break. These are important points. I'm going to let each of you speak. Believe me, we've got time, so you'll both be able to make their points. Um, 
where is all this going? Look, there's eight days to sign up as a member. The first debates have just been um, assembled and, and, and secured in May. Uh, Steph Levitz of the Toronto Star, by the way, broke that story. So we're going to talk more with Tasha and Jenny Byrne in, in a minute, so stay with us.